supported him in 2008. Well, Democracy Now! was on the floor of the convention Tuesday night, where we ran into two former presidential candidates, Ohio Congressmember Dennis Kucinich and the Reverend Jesse Jackson. I think what Michelle Obama has to offer is a two areas of focus of substance. One has to do with the spouses of the veterans, many of whom are in the back door draft to go to school, go to the military because they don't have the money to go to school, and they come back and destroy it. Trouble post-traumatic syndrome and many illnesses and can't get a job. But focus on a job for military spouse, military spouse's security, and the job of those who come home is a big deal. The second the issue of childhood obesity is the beginning of a health crisis with diabetes and the like. So she has grabbed two areas of great substance, I think, that has value. And of course, given our country's orientation, for an African-American woman uh, with her children, displaying uh, a motherly uh, advice and support sets the pace for mothers all around the country. So I think it will be a, a, an address of substance, not just simple. And your thoughts being here in back in the Carolinas, where you come from? No! I think the key of being in the Carolinas, the Voting Rights Act, which is now in jeopardy. This new, this new South... Comes out the water right side. Those girls did display down in Tampa, they're the result of Title IX and affirmative action, the Civil Rights Act. Uh, this new South, where you can have the Carol Carolina Panthers and the Charlotte Bobcats, you can have Boeing and Airbus and, and Toyota because of our civil rights movement. The civil rights movement made the New South, and they are attacking it. We must fight back to protect our growth. And someone said today, we must. Uh, we, we not only must fight for change, we must go out the change we got, but expand upon it. Because as he goes to Ohio, there are 33 counties in Ohio that are in Appalachia. This is the time to revisit the issue of the war on poverty. The time to go to the University of Athens in Ohio, where Lyndon Johnson initiated it. With 50 million Americans in poverty, poverty can no longer be on the back seat. Poverty must be a factor in the campaign and violence. And given what's happening in Chicago, Violence, urban reconstruction, and poverty. Violence, urban reconstruction, and poverty must be injected into the campaign. It's the way to win and to win right. And do you think President Obama is addressing the issue of poverty? Well, I think our pressure will be a fact in that equation. You know, Dr. King supported Kennedy over John, over Nixon, but it was our creative pressure that, that built that bent that made the bend in the road. The same with Teresa Woodard Johnson over Goldwater. Our action, so our act, our lack of action becomes a trail. When we act, we we are part of the equation. We must act to bring about the change we seek. We have the power to affect the president's choices. We must make those who would be progressive must act progressively and not just believe progressively. There are a lot of people who are deeply concerned that President Obama has not been forceful enough in dealing with the financial institutions that brought us into this mess in 2008. We, we bailed out the banks, maybe we had to at that time, but not linked to lending another reinvestment. We bailed out banks without changing the glass Eagle Act. We build the banks without putting in oversight to stop them from doing what they did again. Now there are fewer, bigger banks. We are even more subject to their tyranny now. So there must be some real renewed focus on, on bankster behavior and bankster life options. What do, you, what do you think of the Democrats renaming the stadium, Panther Stadium, because, well, Bank of America Stadium doesn't look so good? How long will it be renamed? I guess for Thursday night. <laughs> it's really Bank of America Stadium, but they're just calling it Panther Stadium. Right. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> on the real Panther Stadium. The fact of the matter, it is, it is Bank of America Stadium, and it's not just a name change, it's the legal changes. I think that even Wall Street bankers are now saying the Glass-Steagall Act uh, 
the grass ticket should be revived. If you have an option to lend and invest on the same roof, you'll choose risky lending over risky investing over lending. That has to change. Uh, that the congressional oversight committees cannot be on the committee and raising money from Wall Street at the same time. What happened? The congressional oversight was corrupted, and the, and the Glass Steagall Act was a, a, a leverage that they employed. And then someone said the banks got what they wanted, and they didn't want what they got. Too few banks control too much capital, and they're holding they're holding captive our political order. That plus super PACs is corrupting our process, political process in absolute terms. Last question. How is your son, uh, Congressman Jesse Jackson? You know, he's getting better. He is um, regaining his strength, but there's no time to be for it, and I hope his priority remains his health, recovery above all. And so many people reach out to him, pray for him. Dennis Sanders and Patrick Hendon, we are we're so grateful for people reaching out. Does he want to remain a congressman? Well, that's, that's a health issue. And I would rather wait for him, his family, and the doctors to make the determination at the right time. Congressman Kusanich, how are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you. So what are your thoughts on this first day of the Democratic Convention? I think people want to unite, and they, uh, they know how important it is for America to be given an opportunity to continue in a direction of economic progress. We have a lot of work to do. There's 10 million people out of work, and there's many people who are losing their homes. So we're, American people are waiting for uh, a signal from the president that he's ready to run right up the hill and plant that flag of economic justice right on top of it. And and uh, this convention is going to be important to send that message out, to motivate people, uh, not just to vote, but to vote in big numbers. I mean, here, people here are convinced. The work that has to be done is back home. We've got to get 10 million people back to work. We've got to help millions of people save their home. That's part of what our mission has to be. And we, got to, and we have to bring our troops home. We'll, we'll be listening for that. What's happening? The longest war that hasn't ended still in Afghanistan, the highest suicide rate of soldiers in history. A little bit of America dies every time one of those soldiers commits suicide. Because those wars were not necessary. The war in Iraq was based on lies. The war in Afghanistan based on a total misunderstanding of history. Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, maybe Iran. What are we doing with this country? We've got to stop this imperialistic penchant. Bring, take care of things here at home. Stop trying to run the world. Stop trying to pretend that we can pick the leaders of other nations. We, do a, we should focus on our leadership here and support America's effort to unite, to have a domestic agenda. We really have to reclaim our country. A young man named Khan, who came from Charlotte, is one of the four who were killed in a drone attack that killed Anwar Alaki in Yemen. Today there was a protest and people were holding up his picture. Sure. What about these drone attacks? I, listen, I, I have been one of the strongest spokespersons in Congress to end the drone attacks. Right when I heard about the first one in uh, a little town called Damadola in Pakistan, where there were a number of people who were killed in, this, in a drone attack. Listen, everything about the drones, drone attacks, wrong. It's unconstitutional. It's extra legal, extra judicial killings, creates more enemies. It makes it easy to go to war. We have to stop it, and it's part. And what we have to do is change the policies that are underneath the drones. The idea that somehow America has the right to extend its force anywhere in the world. No, we don't. And yet, President Obama has said he personally maintains a kill list. You know, I, you know, I object to that. I mean, I can support the president, but I can object to those programs. And I do. Thanks. Ohio Congress member Dennis Kucinich, but not for long. He was redistricted and recently lost the Democratic primary to his fellow Congress member, Marcy Kaptur. Oh, on the issue of drones, a U.S. drone strike killed 13 civilians in Yemen on Sunday. Yemeni government officials have confirmed the toll, saying the intended target of the strike was completely missed. 
According to CNN, outraged family members attempted to deliver the victims' bodies to the residence of the Yemeni president, Abdurabu Hadi, but were denied entry. The Yemeni government says it's investigating. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, breaking with convention.